JY of Sticks, our guest for the rest of this hour, and then open lines coming up on Coast to Coast. I'll start with that question I just kind of threw out there. Where you know there was there was a lot, as you mentioned, a lot of these big lineups and touring acts and you know shows, and you obviously were too young as a band to play Woodstock, but there were other things that came up. Are there shows or events that you passed on that you wish you hadn't? Um, not really. I mean, there's, there's a lot of times, you know, there'd be some great events offered to us, but we had already had to sign a contract on it. And, and it was somebody that, you know, we maybe we'd worked with a few times before. So you just felt like, um, you, you can't, you know, you have to, whatever base you've built, don't right. start destroying it because there's, it seems like it might be a better opportunity. Just stick right. with it. And that's, that's what we always did. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what's the, all those years of being road warriors, what's the weirdest thing you ever saw when you guys were on the road? Um, you can fill that blank in any way you want, brother. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's, uh, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really see anything. I mean, there was a whole lot of shocking stuff that went on back then, you know. Yeah, backstage. Um, and... Oh, I, oh here, here's here's this this one's a little unrelated to sticks, but the first, um, the first rock festival in Illinois um, was at, thrown by Irving Azoff down at a place called Kickapoo Creek, yep. and um. So the the lead singer in the band I had uh, this was before Sticks was born in Italy. Marco Mundo is his name. He's still alive, living in Chicago land area. I love that man. He, he came over on the boat at age six from Italy hmm. to America, and, <laughs> and his favorite thing I'll tell you it always sticks in my brain. He goes, "Jay, why my socks didn't match." He was six years old, and he didn't, they were that poor that they didn't have matching socks for him and whatever. And uh, so, but he, the way he talks about, you know, um, his, 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 okay, so cut, cut to Kickapoo Creek. Right. Um, we get down there, and we get seated in our blankets or whatever and see who's going to play today. And, and there's, this is, this is the Woodstock era. There's, so there's a young lady. She just kind of stands up and takes her top off, right? And and, and my friend Marco's jaw just hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen that so, before. Yeah, well, it, it surprised me that it that it had such a profound effect on him. But I think that's just what his life had been. He hadn't. I don't know if he'd never been to a topless <laughs> establishment, but <laughs> it, it, it just. I mean, his, his look on his face when that happened. Like, <laughs> I still laugh about it today. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Appreciate that. Uh, it, the we uh, two of those things. Don't worry. No, no, no. I, that's, you know, it's, it's a great story. I, 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 I when Chuck Panazzo came out, was that a big deal for the band? Well, I mean, no. You know, I think by the time he did that, um, I mean, the world. I mean. The world kind of knew that homosexuality is is it's out there and it's going to always be out there. Even in nature, it exists. Right. You know, in the human race, um, you know, and I think the thing that probably, I mean, AIDS obviously was was, was a big deal. And, right. Uh, so that's, but Chuck, um, you know, Chuck never really had a problem there, and, um, you know, and and. There, there's so many in in the entertainment industry. Once you get inside there, you realize, well, there's so so many gay men and women that are involved behind right. the scenes doing this. I mean, the great costume designers, great you know seamstresses, what have you, uh, all the kind of stuff needs to go on backstage. They're they're really really talented, and they have maybe of a more sense of what the public wants right. than than the idiot musician does. Um, so I was never really, you know, I mean, it's, it's a long time since there was any, any sort of issue about yeah. uh, that. But, I mean, there, there was a little bit of that that went on early, early 
value for us, but but not a great deal. Okay. Uh, it, it, one other question, and and uh, then we'll get to calls um, because I know that so many people have different memories they want to share with you from the road and, and shows they saw and. Um, but I was reminded on Twitter uh, of that w- it, you're, you had, I'm just quoting here, a famous feud with a very popular radio personality, a guy named Steve Dahl. Um, it, it, does that sound familiar? And where were you on that end of that? Well, I mean, the crazy thing was Steve Dahl uh, came from, I think he came from Detroit. And then he was he was one of the first shock jocks, and he'd say whatever he wanted to say, kind of a thing. And the guy right. actually moved in like a block away from me where I live, really, and, uh, in the western suburbs of Chicago. Um, but you know, it it's it was just his shtick to get attention on the radio to kind of you know push push the edge, push beyond the edge of what was maybe in good taste or whatever. Right, uh, but. You know, the, the baby boom was ready for that, and you know, so I never really saw a problem. And it's uh, well, what did he attack you all about? It just it was just because you were the biggest band in Chicago at that time. You know, I've I've kind of forgotten exactly what what that was all about, and uh, uh, I I just think he was trying to make a name for himself and right. something to oh, totally. on. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, you had Sky Daniels, you had Steve right. Dahl, um, right. and a few other guys whose names are escaping me right at the moment. No, 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 that's good. Yeah, yeah Sky Boy, and then, um, but you also, of the other people who, you know, like, on the AM side, John Landecker, my friend Fred Winston. Um, the the, the uh, going way back. You and, do you and John Landecker? No, uh, Dick Biondi was. Oh, like Dick Biondi, yeah. Top 40 guy on. on uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you're um, – but these were big personalities, and they were they were pushing sticks. They were they were helping to get you guys up to the top. So, uh, all right, let's go get some calls. Uh, let's see. We'll start with uh, Luke, who's on the first-time caller line in St. Louis for JY of Sticks. Go ahead, Luke. Hey, Ian. Hey, James. It's an honor to – be on coast to coast and talk to you guys it's um wow okay so uh i guess my first question is do you still ever talk to glenn burtnick from oh yeah uh well glenn is somebody that i had met uh, when we six broke up for a little while we were started doing solo albums and dennis went off and did a solo album and tommy went off and did a solo album and the record companies both financed those but they, they didn't give me one um, so I went, uh, and I, as I mentioned earlier tonight that I love this band, the Mahavishnu Orchestra. So, uh, Jan Hammer was the keyboard player and there. He's the one that did the Miami Vice theme. And so I did a, I did a solo record with Jan Hammer. Um, so but did you have a good relationship? So Glenn Burtnick for, he's one of those guys, um, I mean, he was on the East coast Everybody knew Glenn Burtnick. He was, he was, oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. he was, he was Paul McCartney, wasn't he, in the original um, Beatlemania? Uh, Beatlemania on He's Broadway. Been in a number of those Beatlemania casts. I don't know if he was the original, but Glenn, really talented guy. I met him through Jan Hammer, and uh, you know, I, I love Glenn, and I'm the one that sort of dragged him into sticks when 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 we, we needed somebody to replace Tommy at that time. And uh, just, I think Glenn was, he's, we were a little too Midwest for him, and he's a little too East Coast for us. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> That's yeah. funny. He was, I think Glenn was in this band. There's this one band in New Jersey, like everybody who was ever, it, had ever made a career came through a band called, I think it was called Cats on a Smooth Surface. And it was this rotating group of people who then would go on to other stuff. And I think Glenn was in there because I knew a guy who knew him either that or knew him from New uh, New Brunswick or North Brunswick. Well, I mean, he, he knew Springsteen and all the whole sure. Springsteen crew. Um, so, so Glenn was tie, tied into all that. And uh, I don't know, he's a really talented guy. And yeah. uh, he and I always got along famously. I dragged him into sticks. And uh, so I love Glenn, and 
I haven't talked to him in ages, but yeah, oh, that's cool. Uh, let's go to Stacy west of the Rockies in Kansas, actually on coast to coast AM. Stacy, hi Ian, hi JY. Hey. Um, I just have seen Stick so many times, and I've had the opportunity to talk to you a few times, and you've always been so gracious and kind, and I thank you for that. Isn't he? Um, he's yeah, and I just wanted to let the audience know that. Um, we just recently again commemorated 9/11, and how uh, a couple of days after 9/11 happened, Six was scheduled to play at our state fair here in Kansas, and the nation was in such disarray, and nobody knew if the band was going to be able to play or not. And um, the band did play, and I think maybe JY, all of you had been on a break, and you were kind of scattered all over. And it, I think it took kind of a big effort for you all to be in Kansas at our state fair. And I remember Glenn running around the stage with this huge American flag. And it was so comforting to be with people. You know, we were so united and that you put on such a stellar show. And of all the shows I've seen <laughs> over yeah. the years, that, that one stuck with you. really one that I will never forget. And I thank you for that. JY, what's your what? Yeah, what's your memory of that? Well, I mean, the state of Kansas, outside of the state of Illinois and little parts of Wisconsin, uh, Kansas City really bought into what Six was in the very beginning. We go play there every every six months, it seemed, and then they would get bigger and bigger crowds. They just Six really caught on in Kansas, and that helped spread it across the rest of the country. So we we deeply. <laughs> And love and enjoyed, you know, playing in Kansas, and uh, uh, we're going to be back there again in the near future. So, are you really? Oh, I, I would love to come and see that. So then, um, but that's interesting because as she's talking about too the that show after nine eleven. Does that? Do you remember? Like, do we? Don't we? Do, like, how? Do, and then going on and performing. Well, it. Um, it, it seemed to be a way to just kind of reinforce that our lives had not been destroyed, and 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 we we were a, strong enough as individuals and as as a collective, not to sound communist, but uh, no, we that's, could, that's not communist. We could, you know, we, you know, this is not this is you know, nine eleven. We will survive this. It's our tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 75? Are you, are you really? I mean, that's. I suddenly like looked up and I was just looking at your... My age? Yeah. Uh, 73 going on 74. Okay. What's that like? Uh, it's, it's as good or bad as you make it. <laughs> well... I, I, I do more medical reading... Uh, I have a lot of medical <laughs> issues in my family, and I like re- get, reading medical right. books. And my wife, in particular, who I lost last year. Oh, I didn't know. Marriage. I'm sorry. But, uh, well, it's, well, it's okay. It's okay. She's in a better place. She had a lot of struggles, but and I, I read all these nutritional things and this and that and the other thing. And um, I don't know. I just uh, vitamin D3, everybody. <laughs> That's that, a... that, that prevents cancer. And okay. don't be afraid to take a lot of it. Okay. Um, but, well, be afraid to take too much, but um, yeah. it's it's really good for you. And uh, so. Oh, I yeah, love I mean, that. It's, yeah. It's, it still so. shocked me when I looked at that, you know. And then I have, because if I know how old you are, then I know how old I am. <laughs> it's kind of a scary <laughs> thing. Uh, East of the Rockies, Hal is in Nebraska for JY of Sticks. Go ahead. Hal. Is he still there? He's showing up on my screen, but he's not sh- saying anything. We'll go to Mary in Ohio on Coast to Coast AM for JY. Go ahead, Mary. Hello, Mr. Young and Mr. Punnett. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, Mr. Young, I'm sure you're aware uh, my Pittsburgh Steelers play Renegade at the oh. game, and it's oh, yeah. is a huge highlight, and I it didn't know. gets the crowd going crazy. And my question is, I just wonder if you or the band members ever been there and felt the incredible energy. 
Well, um, our manager, who's been our manager for about the last 15, 20 years, grew up in Pittsburgh. Charlie Brusco is his name. And uh, it was crazy because we, we were there, uh, you know, doing some, there was like a concert at halftime. We did some something before the, a game with the Steelers. And and then somehow they they played Renegade and uh, and the crowd went wild and and the, kind of fired up the team and they came back to win the game after being down a touchdown I think and uh, became their good luck know, tune yeah something about that song that uh, uh, thank you Tommy Shaw for writing it yeah like uh, like Steve Goodman for uh, the Cubs. You know, I remember they used to always play that Steve Goodman tune. Uh, so I'm going to give the numbers again. And one of the reasons why is because I just know there's so many people that want to talk to him. And if we don't get you in for JY now, when I go to open lines coming up, I'm going to have to answer JY questions. And I, 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 it, it happens every time. Uh, and so l- let's, uh, let's get your questions and comments uh, coming up on Coast to Coast AM for JY. But I will just say for the record, I know he's your friend. I know whatever, but they should have offered you your own solo album. Uh, And Desert Moon was a crap song. I'm just saying that. I'm just as a guy. (laughs) Well, I made made solo records anyway. They just didn't go. I know. I know. I played one of them. I think that was the reason why originally – I want to say that was that was the reason why you came on WGN when I was there and we played uh, tracks from that album. Um, yeah. But it, uh, I just I say that because I, I thought that it showed that side of Dennis DeYoung, which I think is he's a very good songwriter. But to me, that just it lacked that guitar edge. It lacked the uh, the rockness of uh, of you and Tommy Shaw. And so then I'll play one of my. Favorite Sticks songs coming up. It's all Sticks bumpers tonight. Uh, it, not terribly surprising. If you go online, Coast to Coast AM, make sure you sign up for all the fun stuff we have, including that new concert coming up with George Nori. Don't want to miss that. Those will get sold out. It's in Columbus on Coast to Coast AM. This is Ian Punnett. I don't think Tom uh, or uh, Tom Danizer is going to be doing the um, – the Sticks Marathon album pullout alone. I think a lot of people are going to go back in and rediscover some of those songs which they haven't heard for a while. Thank you, JY, for being on as long as you have. Uh, and uh, and and we'll get to those uh, open lines coming up next hour. But tell me more about the – I mean, I remember the whole thing. I was a disc jockey. I was actually a disc jockey in Waukegan, uh, JY, working my way through college. Uh-huh. And and the whole Snowblind thing, when it, you know, it was a, it's a great guitar track. In fact, when Tom asked me what the biggest song was in 1979, I never think in terms of the Sticks ballads. I always think in terms of the rock songs, right? Yeah. So I, that's that's why I couldn't think of it. But your that was a that became a thing, especially in the South. That somehow, if you it was back masking, if you played it backward, it was like do cocaine or what was that whole thing about? What do you remember about that? Well, uh, I mean, for me, the whole tone of the again, just to the tone of Snowblind, it sounds dark, and and it's it's foreboding. Right. This is this is not celebrating. A drug. This is that the people have overdosed on hundreds of times, and it'll stop your heart if you have too much. Right. Um, and so I, I wanted, you know, and cocaine was very popular everywhere back back in those days, late right. 70s. And uh, so I just thought we should, you know, try and put yeah. a song together, and it made it just kind of a little mysterioso. Uh, yeah, you had that kind of – you had a little bit more of that sort of medieval kind of uh, – oh, I don't say Dungeons and dragon kind of feel. But you've got you you got that really – it's a cool – it's a dirge at, at parts, and then Tommy comes in, and it's really cool. But when – so you had – I mean, you I believe you said this in print before. Um, you know, cocaine had popped up a few times in backstage – uh, warm-ups for sticks, 
but it was the fact that you were writing against it that seemed so funny that this that this became a thing that somehow ba- that you had designed the song to be played backward or something so that people could hear that your chants for the devil or whatever it was. Right. Well, I, I, and then on the next album after that, uh, there's a song heavy metal poisoning. And, uh, and there we did hold to a whole backwards voice at the start of that. Right. But it was, it was I, I, I don't know, it was like, you know, join the Boy Scouts or something. What, what, it was, what it was. I, I think it was E Pluribus Unum. I think you did the I United. That's what it was, yes. Right? You. Wasn't it? You did like the yeah. United States in Latin. <laughs> yeah. And people were, yeah. Just for people who are looking for that sort of thing. Uh, all right, let me grab a couple of people who are hanging on on Coast to Coast AM and see how many we can get before the top of the hour. We did find uh, East of the Rockies, uh, Al is in Nebraska for JY of Sticks. Go ahead. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Good, hey, Al, how about you? I'm good. Hey, I was wondering if you happen to remember, JY, a concert in Columbus, Nebraska at the airport. The airport? You were at the airport. This is like late nineties, huh? Well, Wait, had they converted one, one of the vacant military airports or something? No, it was a regional airport. Funny. Yeah, yeah, it was the strangest thing. I tell people about that, and they go, "What?" Yeah. Go, yeah, yeah. Me and a buddy went, and there there had to have been five thousand people there. Where did they play on the tarmac? Yeah. It was crazy. Like, like do you remember a tour? You, flights. Yeah. Did Did you remember a tour where you got off your plane, flew, and then got back on the plane again? No, that we didn't. We had never done. I mean, the the, the gear has got to go on the ground. Uh, it's right. Too much to fly it. So you you have a semi filled with gear, and, and then you usually rent a local PA system and stage whatever, and the promoter will do part of that. So honestly, that. Shame on me, but I do not remember that. Yeah. Well, we'll go wild card line. Pete is in Spring, Texas on Coast to Coast for JY. Go ahead, Pete. Ian, man, I just wanted to say thank you for having just a flipping amazing guest. Um, you yes. have to be embarrassed not knowing, babe. That's just embarrassing. No, no um, I don't because I never paid attention. I played... When I was 19 years old, I played that song every two hours and 20 minutes. I'm not saying I didn't know the song. What I'm saying is I okay. never think about it. And I like if, okay. I love the rock For- sticks or leave me alone. Forgiven. Forgiven. <laughs> Very good. And I tell you what, I am shaking. I am like J.Y., my music hero is on the other line. And, and it's funny you were saying backmasking. You know, if you backmask country music, it's like you get your dog back. You get your right. trailer back. <laughs> you get all right. that back. That's funny. And, uh, oh, yeah. J.Y., man, I want to tell you, thank you so much being the music of our life, man. Yeah. To, for being the glue and the godfather and to keep it going. I mean, through the loss of John, which was yeah. the most underrated drummer in ever. Yeah, it was a great drummer. Was great, but John, yes. And, of course, losing Dennis. But, man, you guys keep it going. I want to say thank you. And I'm. Um, is there any song that you are so tired of playing, you don't yeah. want to play it anymore? And I would love to see how you guys actually, I guess, give birth to a song, whose idea, and then how does it come together? Okay, well, he better say, babe. All right, go ahead. Uh, No, I'm just kidding. J.Y., what song are you sick of playing? Uh, Well, we we haven't played babe since since Venice stopped being with us. And uh, so, I don't know. They honestly, um, I don't know. I I kind of like the stick songs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, so when they come on the radio, you're like, oh, yeah, that was good. Well, I, I mean, like I'm, I'm a hard rocking guy. Yeah. Um, you know, I want Jimi Hendrix, The Who, right. Deep Purple, uh, Judas Priest. Sure. Give me that, give me that heavy rock. So right. When it, gets, when it gets a little bit soft and melodic and dreamy and sleepy like Babe does, you know, that, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that was a number one single. So I can't I can't say it did bad for the band. No. And uh, and I say Mr. Roboto is another song I thought we shouldn't be doing, but ultimately that's that became a number one single. <laughs> yeah, so, but that was more uh, of a momentum thing, I think. 
you know, I mean, your your contribution to that song notwithstanding. Um, all right, but what about that? What, what, I, so what, just real quickly, and we, we're trying to get everybody in, but what's your songwriting process is what he was asking. Well, usually I, I, like, I like to find some catchy musical things, then paste them together, and then think about, you know, a title. But sometimes a title will drive it. Like, obviously, Snowblind was intended to be right. interpreted as an anti-cocaine song. So I just think this needs to be a little bit dark sounding, minor key, and uh, so I, I, I usually work for music first, and then I start thinking about well, what would be a good, you know, uh, thing. I mean, Rock in the Paradise, I'm yeah. credited with you know ha- half credit on that one, and uh, but it, it was just I. Just, you know, rocking the paradise. The riff I play, then and then then, it seemed like that was that was it right there, and uh, and the rest was just Dennis coming up with lyrics and singing it. Yep. And then I uh, I talked about Mahavishnu Orchestra a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, and and so the 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 little riff that 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 that's that's kind of a lift from uh, just the, the the fast jazz riffs that Mahavishnu would do. Yeah, but, but I it was totally. back into a very very simple rock song for everyone to, to bang their heads to. Love that, uh, Catherine West of the Rockies in uh, British Columbia on Coast to Coast DM. Go ahead, Catherine. Ian, thank you for letting me on because you said we're not allowed to call in if we're always on the other one. <laughs> Please forgive me, but I I just couldn't I just couldn't help it. I needed to know, J.Y., when you started singing, I don't know if you took vocal lessons at the very beginning or just was naturally, but did you have any bad habits in your vocals that you had to get rid of? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, vocally, I can't not hit, I cannot hit the notes that I could hit 40 years ago by any means. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, it's I just can't do it. Right. And... Uh, there's some of those things where I was just. You're not alone. We were, we were. Everybody was singing in the stratosphere. That's that was kind of Queen band Queen's influence on all of us. Just the, those real high voices. Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia. Right. Kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, so, but yeah. I mean, I, I could do. I've never been really a smoker. Uh, I, I tend to have allergies, and it tends to clog up my. Oh, funny. And I'm not. I'm not usually not well rested either. So <laughs> all those things combined together for yeah. your vocal. First uh, ca- ca- caller line is Brent in Alabama for JY of Sticks. Brent, hi, hi guys, how are you tonight? Terrific. Good. Good. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for coming on. Uh, my uncle he got me hooked on Sticks when I was like 14. I'm 45 now, so. I've seen you guys in concert, you and Dennis's band. I like you guys both, but I just wanted to say thank you, and it's good to meet you. But I wanted to ask two-part questions, quick two-part question. Um, you um, basically, I wanted to know if you, if there's a, a chance we might ever get an introspective into sticks, like a at the like a box set or with the videos and some like unknown concept albums or new songs that have never been heard before and also how about the rock docu- uh for, I mean the documentary in there with that but what about a rock picture like you know they did the queen movie they did the uh, uh yeah the, the a, a biopic you mean yeah yes, uh, about- you know i can't imagine have you guys have had a box set haven't you we've had box sets before I mean that that's the, that's the record company deciding they're going to package something a certain way to sell it at Christmas and and it's not just one thing but it's it's two or three things packed together and that they, these all resonate and uh, maybe someone from the record company will, will hear that there's a demand for that and and make that happen maybe for the next uh, for the upcoming holiday season, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I'd love to have you. You know, you're welcome back anytime. I just, you're awesome. Um, and uh, that actually, I think that reminds me that somebody tweeted about uh, that because I, I mentioned a couple of times you did an orchestral thing, and this guy said my 
uh, Sticks, I think he felt, was uh, performed with the Contemporary Youth Orchestra in Northeast Ohio. A friend's daughter was in the orchestra. Uh, and it's a hot album streaming on Spotify. How does that feel? Well, um, you know, we we had fun with the Contemporary Youth Orchestra of Cleveland. Uh, and uh, the, the conductor, she, she was a big fan of ours and uh, Eliza Grossman. And uh, so, yeah, we got along famously with her. And it was just an idea that some someone at management level, maybe from an outside suggestion, I'm not sure exactly where, but it it, it worked out really well, and it was a it was yeah. sold out concert first of all, and and I think the recording of it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I loved it. I still have it. I have it on CD. Uh, you may have signed it actually. Now that I think about it, uh, let's see. Jeffrey is on a wild card line in San Diego on coast to coast. Jeffrey, hi, Ian, and uh, thank you. And uh, Jay, why did you ever? Uh, Beat or hang with Grace Slick in the band. You know, we've we were sometimes would be might be in an airport with them, and we might have even opened for them once. But you know, I think we were just, uh, I think we we were somewhat in awe of them and didn't want to bother them. Uh, you know, that's that's Grace Slick. Hello, yeah, she's a, she's a Woodstock, right? She yeah. <laughs> well, and the band, you know, that again that. I mean, here we just lost Robbie Robertson. We're seeing a lot of these people go who were contemporaries. But, um, you know, so of the other bands, who did you like to hang out with when you could when you were on the road? Well, I mean, we we didn't really do a lot of hanging out. Um, I mean, I I would – my wife was an invalid for a number of years. I, I, I would fly home if there was more than a couple of days off and just go back out on the road. Um, right from, from the last fifteen years, anyway. Uh, so it really, I don't know. We, we sort of stayed amongst ourselves, and maybe we'd throw a barbecue for the crew. Yeah. Uh, so or take the crew out to dinner, that kind of a thing, because the crew, those guys don't get nearly, you know, no. thanks no. the way they should be. Uh, but they're they're a tremendous crew we have, and they uh, right. a tremendous tour manager. So it it um, they make our lives possible to you know to make it through even even if we have a little trouble we got people who can fix things so yeah um, good yeah. to have those guys they they make everybody sound good uh, I think we have time for Jim in Vegas on Coast to Coast AM for JY and then uh, we'll uh, we'll adjourn for now but if if coming up later on you want to come back on you know you're always welcome go ahead Jim. Jay, why it's an honor to speak with you. Uh, your guys' shows, six of shows every year in the Venetian Theater at your residency. The, the energy that you guys put out every night, I have not missed a show. You're my all-time favorite band. I mean, you and Tommy and Todd, Lawrence, Ricky, and Will. It, the energy you guys have is incredible, and uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you guys again uh, next year at the Venetian. But your shows in Las Vegas are very special. Love that. Yeah, we, we we love playing in Venetian. It's a great great building, and and to leave the stuff set up, and we can just kind of uh, hang out for a couple of days, and uh, you know, and a few days off in Vegas don't don't hurt a fella. A guy named uh, James Chris who follows me on uh, Twitter said, "My wife calls you Little Jimmy. She knew a lot of the old Chicago rock stars. She once shared a limo with uh, Dave Bickler from Survivor, and I I think it's." That is that that is the legacy you have too of a of a guy that people are still telling stories about. I know I will be talking about this for years, and uh, I, so sorry about your wife again. But thank you again for sharing your time tonight. And uh, I'm I'm looking into that uh, vitamin D, dude. I'm on it. So tomorrow, uh, thank you so much, and thank you for all those great years of songs. Uh, J Y of Sticks. If you missed it, go back and listen to that. Uh, and uh, we'll go to open lines, even though I'll keep playing Sticks Bumpers all night on Coast to Coast AM. This is Ian Punnett.